time for a plant update. Ooh, I have my two monsteras. One of them, um, I started in water, propagated in water. One of them I propagated in dirt. The one I propagated in water did not turn colors and die. It's that one back there behind me. You can see it right there. The one that I propagated in dirt, the um, leaf died off. And let me go grab them for you. <clears throat> this is the one that I propagated in dirt. It, the leaf died off, but look at that beautiful new leaf that it's grown. No fenestrations, no holes, no nothing exciting, but that is the new leaf that it has grown. It is on this lovely moss pole. It sits in my window. This one, oh, there's a root coming up, that's kind of cool. This one is the one that I um, grew, it's inside out because it looks at the window. This one I propagated in um, water, so it never died off. And it's just now pumping out its first brand new little leaf. I don't think, oh, it has fenestrations. Oh my gosh, I'm unrolling it. Its leaf has one little split in it. Ah, oh, that's so exciting. Oh no, I've got moss in my hair. That's gonna be miserable. Anyways, oh, that's exciting. Too cool. Yay. Okay. Um, so those are doing really good and I'm enjoying having them. Oh my gosh, I just got lost everywhere. Oh well. Um, they're doing so good. The one with fenestrations, I'm so excited, I can't even. Um, I've moved them so they can see the sun more. That one, you can see it's just sitting right there in that window. That is a eastern facing window. It gets great sun. Um, the other one is right there and it's also in the window but you see my windows they're kind of you know up off the ground so I can't just put plants on the ground I have to put them up on a table or on a chair or on a stand or something and that's really annoying um one youtuber said that it takes about five leaves to get fenestrations I'm excited to see it it's only one but um it'll be interesting to see what this one does and if it takes as long too um if it takes five or if it does it on the next leaf um I love that the the first leaves are not little teeny tiny ones, they're decent size. They're about a hand, maybe a little bit more than a hand. Um, <laughs> Terry started complaining because there's literally moss poles all around my whole living room now. There's two short ones right there, those two. They have um, mm. philodendrons on them. There's that one. And then there's two over there. Um, the little short fat one has Christmas cactuses on it. I'll bring it over here so you can see it. And the other one, has a pothos on it um let me see this room is amazing so i've got these three big windows here one two three they are eastern windows the window right there is that one way over there is a south facing window and i've got windows on the opposite side of the room that are western facing windows and another south facing window and so this room is just like perfect for growing things but i have to respect my husband and that he doesn't want this to be a greenhouse even though our last name is green and it's technically a greenhouse Anyways, um, I do have a room upstairs that nobody lives in and it has the same side of the house windows and I'm going to probably move some of the plants up there and let them reside upstairs. It's warmer and they're still really good light. So I'll figure that out. But again, I have to get them up off the floor. So they have to be on a table or a stand or something to keep them so they can actually get to the light until they get tall enough and then they will just be in the light. The only thing I don't like about the moss poles is that I have to turn them and face them towards the window. Um, so that I really don't ever get to see the plants to enjoy the plants, but I don't want to have um, a bunch of lights in my room facing them the other direction. So for now, they face the windows and I'm okay with that because they're just growing. Um, I'm working on painting that room right now and I'm going to do a mural of Monsteras on it. So it's going to be fun. But um, let's see. I've added a few more plants to moss poles. So I've got six now i just did have the two so i've got the three big ones so the the pothos the two monsteras are on the big ones two of the smaller ones these two behind me that have the two philodendrons on them and then the one over there that's got the christmas cactuses on it oh my gosh um the big one that's not a monstera is a um marble queen pothos and it's got probably 10 15 leaves i started it almost two years ago um i started it and it was in the dark and it was cold and it didn't get real good watering and the dirt wasn't the greatest aeration so it just kind of was like here's my one leaf 
So it's, I moved it and replanted it and started watering it better and it's grown like crazy. So now it's on the pole. It's not really grabbing the pole yet. So it's tied to the pole at this point. Hopefully the roots will start grabbing on and making it more secure. Um, the smaller two, I have a neon, I think it's a philodendron. It looks like a philodendron. It's got the, the leaves of a philodendron. I'm pretty sure it's a neon philodendron. It might be a lemon lime. I have to wait and see what it looks like. It was just a propagation. The other one I have is a Brazil. Um, the neon has tons of roots, little teeny tiny hairy roots that are coming out and in like nine of them on each node. So it's going to grab onto that pole pretty quick. The Brazil, it hasn't really grown enough. It's just kind of like trying to survive. So I took it out of the water and put it in the dirt, hoping that that would help. Um, it hasn't really done anything yet. And then that small, short, fat one over there, <laughs> it's got my Christmas cactuses. Let me go grab them for you. So this is the neon or lemon lime. I think it's just the neon, but it's, it's growing and it's like attaching itself. It's doing really good. Um, I don't want to pull it apart, but it's got those little roots right there and it's touching. Um, it was just one leaf and now it's got one, two, three, four, and another fifth one is coming out. So that one's going to go really, really well. Next we have the Brazil and it's going to be interesting because when I planted it in here, it didn't have this shoot. Now it's got this shoot and it's like not even close to where the pole is, but hopefully we can, I can train it to come up the pole, but it's got one, two, ooh, that leaf is dirty, three. It had this leaf and this leaf when I got it. So this is all new, but it's pumping out more leaves now. And hopefully with the pole and the watering, it'll be better. And then there's the fun one. so heavy. This took like a lot of moss. Um, this is my Christmas cactuses. So there's 30 plants and they go all the way around and it has so much sphagnum moss in there. Looks like possibly too because there's water on the floor. Good thing I have tile floors. Those Christmas cactuses all propagated from my little one that's back here. Um, I started them and I just kept breaking them and breaking them and breaking them and I had little one leaf chunks. But it, they were in a terrarium, so a 40 gallon fish tank with a lid with plastic and grow lights so it was warm. Um, and they were doing great. I'm just tired of looking at the terrarium. So I'm working on getting rid of it. I think I have nine more bigger ones that I'm going to put into a bigger pot and just make a very full Christmas cactus um, display. Anyways, um, those Christmas cactuses are a lot like the Monstera and all of those. They grow on the side of the trees in the jungle, as do poinsettias. Nobody knows that. They grow them in pots and they make pretties. Um, I have no idea what color those Christmas cactuses either are either, so I'd love to see them bloom. I tried to force them. I think they're too young, so they didn't force. But anyways, those are my moss poles. I absolutely love them. I'm going to make one more moss pole right now, not in this moment, but in the next future. And I have two baby anthuriums and I have searched and searched and searched and I've never seen anybody put an anthurium on a moss pole. They have nubs, they have like air roots, they have all the stuff, why not? So um, since I can't find anybody that's doing it, I'm going to go ahead and try it. And if they attach, they attach. If they don't, they don't. My anthurium that I got, my original plant is so big and I love it. She's so pretty. She just keeps putting blooms out. Um, I split it in half and then I split a baby, I split two babies off of the second half of it. So I've got two little ones. And then honestly, the one I split off of the first one is just as big as the first one. So, but I'm going to take those two little ones and stick them on a moss pole and see if I can't get it to climb and grow big fat leaves. There's all sorts of anthuriums that grow on moss poles that people grow. They have the giant leaves and they're really pretty with all of the veins and all the stuff. But I, I don't know if regular anthuriums will do it. So we'll try it. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm curious and worst case scenario, I've got a plant that's tied to a pole and that's that. So my biggest struggle with the moss poles is like putting them on the floor and then the plant can't see the sun. So keeping them up is difficult and I just I have to figure out a better way. I need a, 
I have this table and it's great, but I have more than will fit on the table. So that's why I'm moving some of them upstairs to kind of alleviate the stress of them in this room. Um, I also had a propagation of a string of turtles because I'm the turtle lady and I love my turtles and it's over there now. Um, it is, it was this long and now it's grown about that much more and they're really little teeny tiny. So I turned them and I spun them back into the dirt. Well, it's in sphagnum moss on top of dirt, but the roots don't go past the sphagnum moss. They're just in the sphagnum moss and that's fine. Probably not the best though, because it doesn't hold moisture like you would want it to. It's been in the terrarium too. So I brought it out. It's now, I made a hanger for it. It's in the hanger. It's not a nice looking hanger. It works. It's my first macrame I ever tried. And to the average person, you would never see it and think, oh, that's not store-bought. But to me, I'm very critical. So it's just over there. So where it's hanging, I don't know if I can get it. It's right. Where's my finger? Right there. So where it's hanging right there, it's not real lit. This room, I've got all the lights on right now because I'm videoing. Um, but when this room is normal, it's kind of a dark corner. Um, the, the lights are pink, purple, blue. And they kind of glow. And it's kind of annoying. And I didn't want to irritate my husband any more than I already had. Ooh, there's another hanger upstairs. I could hang it up there. And there's a window up there too. But anyways, the turtles are down in the pot about an inch. So they're not going to get the light anyways that's outside. They're just kind of in a cave. So I laced it up with a grow light string of grow lights. But I also set it up on my Google Home so that it turns on at like 10 o'clock at night and turns off in the morning around 6. So it's still getting its 12 hours of light. Wait, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 hours of light plus whatever natural light it gets in the daytime. And it's still getting the darkness that it needs to rest. Yes, plants need to rest. They need to have that time where they are in darkness and they can stop photosynthesis and do whatever it is they need to do. Um, anyways, hopefully that one will grow. I kind of want to get it to where I can see it so that if it is drying out, I can tell. And I'm not just like squirting bottle up in the air because you can't even see it. But I also want it to be like full in the pot. And anyways, I might bring it down. It, I also thought about covering it with saran wrap so that it would create that greenhouse effect and make it grow warmer, faster, better. I probably will do that. I just need to find a rubber band, but, um, I like it. It's doing good. I have my inch plant or my wandering Jew is doing really well. It's putting off leaves and growing. It's, I think it wasn't getting enough water for a while because the gaps between are supposed to be like less than an inch and they're about an inch and a half, but it started to really flourish. So when I repot it, I will break those down and the ones that are long will go back in the pot. It's got four or five in there now, so I'll have like eight or ten in the next pot when I put it in a bigger pot and get it fuller. Um, I did learn that those are creepers and not climbers, so it won't do good on a moss pole because it wants to go down along the ground. So it's one of the great ones to put up high and then have it come down and cascade. So we'll see what happens. Um, but on that note, that's my plants. They're doing their thing. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate the time that you spent um, listening to me ramble on and keeping up in, with my posts and my life and my journey to achieve my bucket list. Um, just for whatever it's worth, I just want to make a statement that everything in these videos is just my life experience. I am not a doctor or a nutritionist. I am not certified in anything. I might be certifiable, but I am in the process of my journey and I'm sharing my journey with you. Um, if you learn something that you like, do your own research, make your own goals, set your own standards. This is just what I'm doing. So I'm not telling you to do it. I get my information from a variety of doctors and studies and people. And I tend to not listen to my doctor and I am not advising that to anybody. Doctors go to school to learn things. Most of them actually know what they're talking about. But if you don't agree with your doctor, do the time, take the time to learn for yourself, do the research. Anyways, here's to a healthier, happier you and me. Let's do this.